Hello everyone, my name is Tim, I go by Foamy Guy. This is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for April the 17th, 2023. Uh, this weekly meeting occurs on the Adafruit Discord channel. Um, during this meeting, we will talk about all things CircuitPython. Uh, feel free to add uh, hug reports and status updates in the notes document. Uh, during the meeting, we will go through them as a round robin sorted by username uh, as they appear in that document. If you can't make the meeting, but you would still like to participate, go ahead and just add uh, your notes to the document with a missing meeting or text only or something like that, uh, and we'll read those off for you. Um, let's see here. Let me catch up to the script and stop trying to wing it as much. Um, for folks that might be new, uh, this meeting is about CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python that is designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Um, CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit. If you would like to support Adafruit, you can do that by purchasing hardware from their website, adafruit.com. Um, and those of us who they do sponsor to work on the project, uh, definitely really appreciate all of the folks that purchase hardware there. Um, this meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. Um, uh, I have just noticed that the timestamper did not actually run, so I'll try to do timestamps manual. I got them visible over here. Um, sorry about that. Uh, it does occur on the Adafruit Discord. We'll hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev channel, as well as the CircuitPython text channel. Uh, the meeting typically occurs on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern or 11 a.m. Pacific time, except when that coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there is a link to a calendar that you can view. Uh, online or add to your favorite calendar app. Uh, we also do send notifications about the upcoming meetings in the Discord. If you'd like to receive those notifications, just be at, just ask to be added to that CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a notes document that accompanies the meeting and the recording. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video so that you can use the doc to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run about 30 to 60 minutes. Um, after each meeting, we will post a link for the next meeting's notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages there. Uh, you can always find the latest notes document pinned in that CircuitPython dev channel, and you can add your notes for the following meeting at any point throughout the week. If you wish to participate but you can't attend, you can leave your hug reports and status updates in that document for us to read off for you during the meeting. The meeting is held in five parts. The first part is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of the Python uh, on microcontrollers newsletter. The second part is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. That one is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers separate from our status updates. The third part and the first of our two round robins is the hug reports section. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things that folks are doing. Take the time to recognize folks uh, in our community and beyond for the awesome stuff that they've been up to. The fourth part and the second of our two round robins is the status updates section. Status updates is an opportunity to report on what you've been up to. Take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you will be up to uh, over the next week until the next meeting. The fifth and final section of the meeting is in the weeds. That's an opportunity for more long form discussion. Those discussions can come out of status updates uh, or they can be identified ahead of time as something that is going to be too long or involved for status updates. Uh, if you do know of any in the weeds topics, please go ahead and drop those down at the bottom of the notes document uh, just as soon as you come up with them. That way we don't have to wait around too long at the end of the meeting for those to pop up. Uh, uh, all right, so with that, we will get into some community news. Let me get down there and take the first timestamp. Uh, go. Uh, so community news. The first item in community news this week uh, is the uh, Sony uh, has backed the Raspberry Pi with funding and access to AI chips. Uh, Sony Semiconductor Solutions has announced an investment in Raspberry Pi Limited. Uh, the for-profit arm of the Raspberry Pi empire, telegraphing hopes that it will be able to make its, uh, I don't know the correct pronunciation, so I'll, I'll go with the, uh, the letters, A-I-T-R-I-O-S, uh, Edge Artificial Intelligence, or Edge AI, 
platform, uh, the go-to way to boost the single board computer's capabilities for low power on-device machine learning. The firm raised the cash at the same $500 million valuation it was worth in a 2021 funding round. The company has become a more active player in the enterprise. In a typical year, roughly 70% of its sales now come from commercial customers embedding its products into factories and consumer devices. Uh, and there are links here to uh, more information about that on CNBC as well as Hackster.io. Uh, next up, we have uh, PyCon US is coming up this week. PyCon US 2023 is coming up in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, that is going to be April the 21st through the 23rd, with development sprints occurring on the 24th through the 27th. Um, Adafruit CircuitPython team members are going to be there uh, hosting events. Uh, Katni Rimbor, as well as Jeff Epler, will be present along with a few other well-known community members. Uh, so if anybody is interested or going to be out at PyCon, please uh, let us know in the Discord and uh, be great to meet up with the folks who are there. Um, next up, we have, let's see here, Python Software Foundation is worried about uh, looming EU cybersecurity rules. Uh, the Python Software Foundation, PSF, uh, that is the entity that um, funds and develops uh, Python, for those that don't know, uh, they are concerned um, that a proposed EU cybersecurity law will leave open source organizations and individuals unfairly liable for distributing incorrect code. Uh, the quote that's here says, if the proposed law is enforced as currently written, the authors of open source components might bear legal and financial responsibilities for the way their components are applied in someone else's commercial project. Uh, product, I should say. Uh, the PSF stead in a statement shared by Executive Director Deb Nicholson is the one who uh, made this quote for us. So um, look into that if you are interested there. I know uh, all of us are keenly interested in open source, so I suspect many of us will have an interest in that uh, as it develops. Uh, and then uh, rounding out the news items for the week, we have got uh, the project of the week, which is the PYPRCA CircuitPython Calculator and Computer. PYPRCA is a Python programmable calculator and CircuitPython computer. Uh, it has a dedicated numerical key block for better native input of numbers. It also has a QWERTY key set for writing programs, functions, uh, excuse me, for writing, uh, fun uh, excuse me, for writing programs. Functions like sine and cosine are typed out rather than using shift buttons. This device is based on the Raspberry Pi Pico. It's a bit shorter and wider than a NumWorks calculator. And there are links here to the uh, Twitter thread as well as uh, Hackaday IO project page for that device. Uh, so those are all of the items for the newsletter. That's where all of these things came from. So let me tell you a bit about that. The CircuitPython weekly newsletter is a CircuitPython community run newsletter that's emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are available on adafruitdaily.com. Uh, it highlights the latest Python on hardware related news from around their web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or projects, uh, edit next week's draft on GitHub. You can submit a pull request with changes to that draft. Um, you can also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email to cpnews at adafruit.com. Uh, so that is it for our newsletter segment. So next up, we will get into the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Let me take the timestamp for that one. Uh, this uh, report, oh, let me catch up over here, actually. Uh, this is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall and then separately discuss the core libraries and Blinka. So first up, I will tell you about the overall stats for the week. Uh, this week across the entire project, we had 24 pull requests merged. Uh, let's see here. Um, from those 24 pull requests, there were 17 authors. Uh, I did not highlight names ahead of time, but a couple of the names in here that do look new to me. Uh, so thank you to these folks who might be newer or less frequent contributors. Uh, M-M-O-N-T-O-L, X-S-T-O-K, Flom84, Andy Bing, uh, Stone Hippo, uh, let's see, Stephen Gilbert-Toski, 
Um, Anthony W, Apple Cuckoo. Uh, yeah, I think those are the names that jump out to me as uh, either newer or less frequent contributors. So thank you to all of those folks, as well as uh, many of our more usual suspects that do appear in the list. Um, we had uh, 10 reviewers this week, so thank you to all of our reviewers. Uh, those do look like the usual list of names, so thank you to all the folks who are working uh, week in and week out reviewing uh, PRs across the CircuitPython projects. Um, there were 23 closed issues by 10 people, and uh, 16 issues opened up by 14 people. Uh, so that's it for overall, and I will pass it over to Scott to tell us more about the core. Awesome. Thank you, Tim. Um, OK, <clears throat> for the core, we had seven pull requests merged from six different authors. Uh, a couple new folks there as well, so thank you to them. Uh, we have four reviewers. As always, thank you to our reviewers. We had 24 open pull requests. Uh, a number of those are drafts, and a number of those are new. So we're not in too bad a shape. I think we're underneath that like first single page of pull request metric that I, I like to follow. Uh, Issues-wise, we had 15 closed issues by six people and six open by six people, so we're down nine, which is awesome. For a total of 625 open issues, uh, we have eight active milestones, and I'm going to go through these numbers because Dan and I triaged issues last week. So we use milestones as a course for uh, course prioritization for Adafruit-funded folks on CircuitPython. That is to say, if something's marked long-term and you're interested in working on it, please feel free to do that, and we'd happy be happy to guide you doing that. Um, OK, so from kind of highest priority to lowest priority, we have zero open issues for 8.0x. Uh, we have 10 open issues for 8.1. That's the next stable release we expect to do. Um, 8xx has 28 open issues. Um, this is quite a lot, but a lot of it needs to be retested as well. Um, this is the kind of primary bucket that we went through and got uh, things out of. I think it was 60 or so last week. Um, so these issues are kind of like things we'd like to fix, but not sure exactly when we're going to do them. Um, and they're, they're bugs more, more than features. Uh, then we have 9.0. 9.0 is our next major, uh, major stable release. Um, and we have 25 open issues for that, so we moved some stuff there. Um, particularly IMX stability stuff got moved to 9.0. Um, and then we have a few uh, libraries, long-term support, and third-party that are kind of things that are um, either not on our radar, so long-term, or things that are not necessarily actually issues, but they're, they're things that we want to track anyway. Um, so that's the state of the CircuitPython core pull requests and issues. All right. Thank you, Scott. Uh, mm -hmm. Next up, I will uh, pass it over to Katni, if you're available, to tell us about the libraries. Yep. All right, so this section <clears throat> applies to uh, all of our CircuitPython libraries. That includes everything in the CircuitPython community bundle, as well as the Adafruit library bundle, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and a couple of extras, such as our cookie cutter. We... Um, had 11 pull requests merged with uh, eight different authors, a number of which were listed earlier as new folks, uh, and seven reviewers. I do want to call out one person, uh, J. Edgar Park. Um, that's John Park, and uh, he doesn't typically do reviews, so that's excellent to see um, his name pop up. Of our merged pull requests, uh, da -da -da -da, four of them were two weeks or older. I'm really glad to see that we're still getting to uh, through the backlog um, as we go, leaving 48 open pull requests. We had six issues closed by five people and nine open by eight people, leaving 611 open issues. And uh, we have 73 of those labeled good first issue. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, including the list of open pull requests and um, a list of all the open issues as well. If you're interested in contributing by reviewing, check out the open pull requests. If you have the hardware for anything, test it. If you don't, um, check out the code. Take a look at it for syntax, uh, etc. And if you have anything, any changes to suggest, leave a comment uh, or let it leave a comment and let us know that you took a look and everything looks good. 
this is always helpful and once you are comfortable with that we can talk about leveling you up to the review team if you're interested in contributing uh, to Python code or documentation, uh, you can check out the list of open issues. Uh, you can search by label. If you're new to everything, uh, Good First Issue is a great place to start. Uh, we have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, which is good for uh, both new folks and um, seasoned folks just to know how we do our uh, workflow. And we're always available on Discord to help you. So don't let any part of that intimidate you, and um, we want to make sure that you can contribute in a way that works for you. Uh, in terms of library PyPI weekly download stats, our total statistics uh, for all of the libraries, uh, 310 of them that are on PyPI, was 102,476 downloads, uh, which is back up to where it was typically. The last few weeks have been uh, lower for some unknown reason. And the top 10 libraries are uh, listed in the notes document if you are interested in seeing those. In terms of library updates in the last seven days, we had one new library from uh, Jose David uh, called CircuitPython Simple Dial, and a number of updated libraries that I will not read off. And that's where we are um, with the libraries. All right, thank you, Katni. Uh, next up, I will send it over to maker Melissa, if you're available to tell us about Blinka. I am. Um, so Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry, or Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And uh, this week we had, um, oops, it scrolled on me. Uh, we had six pull requests merged by uh, four authors and five reviewers. There are currently five open pull requests amongst the repositories. There were two closed issues by two people and one open by one person, leaving a net of 93 open issues. There were 12,437 PyPI downloads in the last week and 16,928 PyWheels downloads in the last month. And we are currently at 101 supported boards. And overall, there was uh, a lot more activity with uh, more pull requests being submitted uh, this these pa this past week, and so it's kind of good to see the activity picking up on there. And that's it. Alrighty, thank you, Melissa. Uh, next up, we will transition into the hug reports section. So, hug reports is a chance to highlight folks in the Circuit Python community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start and then we'll go down the list alphabetically or however they appear in the notes doc to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text only or missing the meeting, uh, just leave a note by your name in that document and I'll read your uh, hug reports off for you when it is your turn. Uh, so I will get us started on hug reports after I take the first time stamp. Um, hug reports for me this week, thank you to uh, Nerdoc who shared a tip about a uh, or an MIT licensed project called Tabler, uh, specifically Tabler icons, um, Neurodoc shared when I was looking for some icons over the weekend. Uh, this project is actually really cool. Not only are there thousands of icons that are free to use, uh, there's also a full kind of front end web template uh, with many great looking example pages that you can uh, build your own websites from. Uh, so that's actually really cool. And I may um, be looking into that to do some other stuff with it as well. So. Uh, cool stuff there. Thanks to Neradoc for that. Um, hug report to Jeff for working on SynthIO, as well as Toddbot and JP for testing out the early versions of that. I'm excited to uh, play with that. Um, thank you to Scott for working on support for the DVI uh, output, uh, as well as Mark Gambler for testing that out. And then a group hug to everybody. Uh, next up is C. Grover, who's not attending, so I'll read. Uh, C. Grover has a group hug for the team and community, and a hug report for Paul Cutler for the Reawakened CircuitPython podcast. Hurrah! Uh, next up is Dan H. Okay, thanks. So uh, these are all pull requests from CircuitPython. Thanks to Flym84, who is doing some work with GCC 13, and fix some things in advance of that. We are still way back but we will be moving forward at some point it's glad i'm glad to know that it mostly works thanks to apple cuckoo for a documentation fix 
Thanks to Isaac Ben for adding a web workflow name setting in settings.toml. Um, thanks to Retired Wizard for various fixes and testing of all kinds. And uh, thanks to the Sci folks at Scilabs who uh, ported CircuitPython to a new chip family and uh, contributed quite a substantial pull request. And Scott has more about their uh, thing in Hug Reports also. OK. All right, thank you, Dan. Uh, next up is Hug Reports from David Glauda, who's not present, so I will read. Uh, David has Hug Report for John Park for promoting the WeChuck community library and the UDraw, uh, probably MicroDraw, I'm guessing is uh, how that would be pronounced, tablet uh, in the CircuitPython Parsec video. Uh, another Hug Report for uh, Jeff, as well as Toddbot and John Park for work on SynthIO and the Envelope. Uh, David says uh, he's still learning MIDI and synth, but I fell, uh, felt the interest, uh, pr probably felt the interest in this, uh, even if it does require a, a, a Biffy C MCU, uh, Buffy, I'm assuming there, like a larger MCU. Um, Hug Report uh, also for Nerdoc for network stack stuff that he is working on, uh, Universal API, uh, as well as WebSocket. Uh, I know this will be useful to all. And then uh, rounding out David's section, uh, there's a hug report for Paul Cutler for new episodes of the CircuitPython podcast. Uh, next up is DJ Devin 3. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, I have a hug report for Catney for documentation and leadership in the Discord helpers channel. That's behind the scenes stuff, but she's continually updating and revising things to help uh, help others help you to help yourself kind of thing. Uh, so thank you for all that. And she knows what she's done, so thank you. Um, a hug for Naradoc for guiding me through using display shapes with Display.io. I completely misunderstood the way that group appends worked and now have a much better grasp on hiding or showing UI elements. And I'm really excited about uh, getting into GUI design because of him, so thank you. A uh, hug to Anic Data and Hopcappy for a late night help session and troubleshooting a problem with the Feather S3 onboard battery monitor throwing an OS error during read failures. They gave excellent advice for using try, accept, and power modes to filter the issue and improve performance. Uh, at approximately 10 to... Oh, it, the failures of it happen about every 12 hours or so, so it's not like a fast iteration cycle to track. Uh, so it's going to take a while to solve that. Um, all of your advice put me on the right track. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, a big hug to all the CircuitPython developers for fixing the Wi-Fi related hard fault bug on the S3. My wet feather weather station is now back up and running thanks to all the S3 updates after the 8.0 launch. It wasn't working before 8.0. And now after I loaded um, 8.0.5, it's now just magically working. So thank you to all the developers that work on the back end every day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's it. Righty, thank you, DJ Devin. Uh, next up is Katni. Hello again. So first and foremost, I want to thank Phil Lamore for coordinating signing two Adabot lunchboxes for me uh, so I can put together two kits to donate to the PyLadies auction at PyCon uh, 2023. PyLadies is a uh, Python group that uh, is open to all, but um, puts a lot of effort in to uh, ensuring that you know women are represented, and um, they uh, take donations and so on um, to help fund uh, a number of things, including people who may not be able to afford to travel to conferences. Uh, they help with they help covering travel and so on and so forth. And every year at PyCon, they do an auction where people donate stuff, and then um, it's a it's a whole dinner, and it's a whole event, and it's amazing. Um, and the kit I did last year went over pretty well, and uh, this year the two that I'm donating are signed by Lamore. So uh, super secret um, addition to that situation, so I'm hoping that works out. Um, to everyone who's been helping me with PyCon preparation, uh, it's too much to list uh, specifics, but you know who you are. To Jeff, I'm looking forward to seeing you later this week. To Tectric, the same thing. Um, hug report to Foamy Guy for writing fantastic badge code for me. I'm super excited. It's 
that's received a lot of updates since the last chance that I got to take a look at it. So I'll be popping that on to my Pi badge later today. And uh, it's exactly everything that I hoped it would be. So <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And to uh, C. Grover for slimming down the improved thermal camera software. So I can put that on my badge as well. Um, it'll have a normal badge uh, going on. There will be a sn game of snake and uh, also a uh, thermal camera. Um, so I tossed a feather wing on the back of the badge. To Naradoc for helping me sort out uh, button debounce without using keypad in a way that doesn't max out the Circuit Playground Express. I have done it a number of times, but not any time recently, and uh, was completely gone out of my brain um, how to go about that without either introducing another library or uh, a lot of extraneous code. And uh, Naradoc's um, suggestions were far better than what uh, I would have come up with. Um, so sorry to those I missed. It's been nonstop for the last week, and a group hug to everyone. Alrighty, thank you, Katni. Uh, next up is Maker Melissa. Hello. So uh, I wanted to give a uh, start by giving a hug to, I'm not sure how you pronounce this, Creechy, uh, for all your contributions to the CircuitPython code editor. Uh, a hug to Alex Corvix, Corvus84 for testing out the possible, some possible I2S uh, mic script fixes in several different configurations on the uh, Raspberry Pi. Uh, I to Dan uh, for leading the effort and making the Blinkit documentation better, and to Ketney and Jepler and anyone else, anyone else attending PyCon this year, and a group hug to anyone else. Awesome. Thank you, Maker Melissa. Uh, next up is Mark Gambler, who I will read. Uh, Mark has a hug report for Scott for Plint... Uh, excuse me, preliminary work on DVI support uh, that Mark experimented with over the weekend. Uh, after that is Michael Pocusa. Uh, let me get the timestamp in there. Um, Michael has a hug report for Dan H, Anic Data, Niradoc, and Deshipu for discussion about Adafruit HTTP server and security concerns related to accessing parent directories. Uh, next up is Paul Cutler. Thanks, Tim. Um, a hug report for Jepler, Toddbot, and JP for their work on SynthIO. It's been really fun following along, which inspired me over the weekend to learn more about Synths and, and MIDI, and a hug report for Liz for her MIDI for Makers guide. I learned a ton this weekend. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Paul. Next up is Toddbot, uh, who I will read. Here, Toddbot has got hug report for Jepler for SynthIO work, uh, even during vacation. It's so fun and works on uh, RP2040. Uh, uh, and then a hug report uh, also from Toddbot. This is to Tectric, Niradoc, and uh, Scott for uh, teaching Toddbot about the const function. Uh, and then next up, I will pass it over to Scott. Thank you, Tim. Uh, first, a hug to T. Hess for the web workflow testing and improvements. They've done a, a couple really uh, awesome improvements for web workflow. It's great to see people using that and improving it. Uh, also for Maker Melissa and I'm going to say Crikey, I think it's part of their name, uh, for code editor, editor improvements, I'm really happy to see people starting to use code.circuitpython.org and uh, getting to the point where they're actually making it better too. Uh, hug to uh, Scilabs Bella 5 and Scilabs Chat and Win for the Scilabs XG24 port PR uh, that Dan referred to as well. Um, very, very exciting to see folks from a microcontroller, like semiconductor company, uh, bringing CircuitPython to, to their devices. So that's really, really awesome. Um, a hug report to Toddbot and JP, uh, as a couple of folks just mentioned about for testing Jeff's SynthIO envelope improvements. I'm very excited to see that. And I think it's going to, I hope it will dovetail nicely with this DVI stuff. Um, and then last up, a hug report to Katni and Jeff for uh, representing the Adafruit CircuitPython folks at PyCon. All right. Thank you, Scott. Uh, mm -hmm. Rounding out the hug reports section is Tectric, who's missing the meeting. So I'll read. Uh, Tectric has hug reports for uh, Niradoc for helping me understand how imports work with regards to RAM. Uh, a hug report for Toddbot for raising an interesting conversation that helped me better understand how const works and a group hug for everybody. 
Uh, so thank you to Tectric as well as uh, everyone else who participated in Hug Reports this week. Uh, next up will be the status updates section. Status updates is our time to, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see, lost my spot there. Our time, uh, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you have been doing since the last meeting and what you will be doing until the next meeting. It's also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. Uh, if a discussion does become too long for status updates, we can always move that down to in the weeds. Uh, so I will get us started on status updates. Uh, for me, um, in the past uh, week or so, I've been working on enhancements for the Pi Badger Conference Badge app, as well as the Snake game that it launches. Um, to kind of uh, go along with that, um, one of the things that was added was a menu to be able to launch uh, other programs like the Snake game and the camera that Katni mentioned. Uh, this menu is drawn with a library called List Select, which I had actually made a while ago, but it turned out never actually formally uh, released. So um, as part of the process, I got that actually released and up on GitHub and in the community bundle this week. Um, the other thing that I started working on uh, over the past weekend has been a uh, weather station or IoT server that runs on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, so this is a Django project. It basically runs a server on the Pi. It can connect, collect data from local sensors, uh, either connected to the Pi, uh, you know, via I2C or SPI or however. Uh, and it could also collect data from remote sensors that is passed over the network uh, back over to that device. Um, once the data has been collected, I'd like to make some pretty dashboards that show charts and, uh, you know, highs and lows and things like that with the information that it has uh, collected. Um, I don't have the dashboards working quite yet, but that's uh, kind of the my goal for this uh, whole project. Um, I'm intentionally trying to make it a little bit more generic um, than just my specific use case. Um, so I'm interested in temperature and humidity, uh, but I'm trying to keep it kind of general enough that it could be used for other things as well if uh, somebody else wants to repurpose it or even just learn from it to make something. Um, while working on that, uh, I teased out an issue that uh, cropped up with a uh, SI7021 sensor on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, turns out this sensor was not working, at least with the uh, currently released uh, library, so I'm uh, tinkering around with that, and I think I have actually got a, uh, a fix that can work for that, but I need to submit a PR later on for that. Um, so those are the things that I have been up to. Uh, next up is C. Grover who I will read. Uh, C. Grover says, the Precision VCO project is working nicely now after experiencing some weird DAC behavior when using both the uh, Itsy Bitsy M4 DACs, uh, those are A0 and A1. When A0 was instantiated, the output voltage would slowly drift from zero to 3.3 volts and then hold at 3.3 volts until the value was set in code. If A1 was subsequently initialized, A0 would again slowly drift from its newly set value to saturate at 3.3 volts. The workaround is to set A0's value in code just after instantiating A1. Uh, it's not ideal since A1 creates a pop when it suddenly changes values. Uh, Seagrover has filed an issue documenting this information. In the process of testing the M4 DAX and looking for other, more available MCU options, uh, Seagrover noticed that the ESP32-S2 TFT's uh, A0 DAC truncates and reverses values below the midpoint. The A1 DAC works as expected. Uh, they'll do some additional testing before filing an issue. Uh, the photo, which is in the document here, if you'd like to take a look at it, this photo simulates, uh, excuse me, this is a photo of simultaneous sweep of A0, which is in uh, on the top in yellow, and A1, which is on the bottom in blue, from 0 to 65535. Uh, all right, and uh, next up for status updates is Dan. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, last week I mentioned I was testing the Bosch BNO055, which doesn't work very well on the i.mx board, the Metro M7, and a couple other things like the ESP32S3. And I tested the BNO085, and it's similarly a problem. This is really more of a problem with these chips, which violate the I2C protocol sometimes. 
So I added some learn guide alert boxes and a fact entry there. And maybe eventually we'll make the drivers be more robust to these errors, but the problem is really in the sensor chips themselves. Um, as uh, Melissa mentioned, uh, I was thinking, kind of inspired by something Naradoc mentioned in, in Discord, that the uh, we could improve the um, explanatory material in the Blinka-based guides, uh, or the in Blinka intro guides. And so I'm going to work on that, and Carter will, and Melissa will review it. Um, and as we mentioned, we got mentioned in the status, we triage the 810 and 8XX issues. Uh, we assigned some of those issues to ourselves and to Jeff, and we moved a bunch of issues to 900 or long-term because they don't really need to be fixed for 8XX. And I'd like to now get back to re reviewing uh, Greg Nevarov's AsyncIO proposed changes uh, now that uh, hopefully we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel for 810. Okay. All righty. Thank you, Dan. Uh, next up is David Glado, who's not present, so I'll read. Uh, says, uh, not much so far for this week, and uh, a new uh, ac acquisition uh, of a device not yet supported in CircuitPython is the Feather DVI, the uh, Feather USB host, and IntelliKey adaptive keyboard. So a couple new devices that David uh, got a hold of this week. Um, next up is DJ Devon 3. Thank you. Uh, this week, I submitted a PR example for sequential chaining of the four 13 by 9 matrix backpacks and submitted a request to add tuple I2C address support to the IS31FL3741 library, which is the matrix backpacks. I'd like to get all four working together as one horizontal RGB matrix, kind of like chaining seven segment backpacks. Uh, but my hands are tied right now for further progress without the tuple address support. And I'm hoping there is current limiting code in there where you can drop it down, drop one down all the way. And I'm hoping that might be enough in order to get at least two or three working, if not all four, uh, simultaneously. Uh, I designed and 3D printed part of a hinged breadboard wire storage box, my first 45 degree print. The rest of it should be finished printing by tomorrow. Each part is a 30-hour print. Started exploring a mini RC robotics project combining an RC um, toy tank <laughs> uh, and camera system. And I'm hoping to use it as a cheap and fun way to inspect inside of the plumbing drains under my house, which are encased in a slab of concrete. Uh, I designed a 3 3D printed... Uh, no, I just designed a workbench lamp that ha uh, housing that combines a fume extractor lamp and webcam mount into one piece. I'm still working on the electronics and I hope to control all of it with CircuitPython. Uh, I have yet to uh, print or combine the electro. Oh, if anybody wants to take a shot at doing that first, um, the STL files are already available on printables. It's just too big for my uh, bed, so I have to like print that on a 45 degree angle, which is probably going to be a three-day print for me. Uh, and I want to say thanks to the 8.0 updates, I was able to renew my Feather Weather Station TFT project on the S3 without it crashing every couple of minutes. And I added a high-pressure and a low-pressure system pop-up using Display.io that serves as a rudimentary storm warning system. Uh, I think that's all I got. All righty. Thank you, DJ Devin. Uh, next up is Fede2, who's text-only. Uh, Fede2 says... Uh, they've been working on coding a music instrument pedal that uses AI to unmix any song into its component instruments and then uses Blinka and Seesaw rotary encoders to let you mix it however you'd like. Perfect for practicing a song or just to have fun and replace your favorite guitar, uh, drum, or bass player or singer. Waiting for QT SD card and some M7 boards as they take some time to make their way to Costa Rica to develop another version with cheaper hardware. The current version uses a Pi 4, and there are links here to a video as well as a GitHub uh, repo if anybody is interested in that, um, as I certainly am. That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, 
The other item that Fede2 has is trying to port Blinka to a Mango Pie, which is a uh, round $20 Risk V64 uh, board, uh, but I'm still having trouble getting I2C working uh, in all available Linux distros. Uh, all right, so that wraps up Fede2. Next up is Cadney. Hello. So <clears throat> the RFM69 guide went live uh, with, uh, without the CircuitPython Essentials pages. Those have since been completed, and uh, the final touch that it needed was a basic radio demo, because that's what most folks want to do with this board, is receive and uh, send data. So I have added a page that includes an example where you press the, the button on one feather, and it changes the NeoPixel on the other feather. So that should be... Um, that should be good to go. It's in moderation right now, so it's not live yet, but it will be very soon. And then uh, it sounds like um, someone else who's working on uh, Arduino stuff for these boards uh, is going to add the Arduino radio examples so that uh, they're available in both languages. So today, um, I'll be starting the RFM95 guide. It definitely isn't going to go live uh, until well after PyCon, so, um, you know, be excited about that, but don't get too excited. Um, for what it's worth, uh, the, the code for the RFM69 and the RFM95 is different. There are two different libraries, but almost everything else about these feathers is identical. So if you're interested in, you know, anything that isn't related to the radios uh, code-wise, Check out the RFM69 guide, it'll tell you a lot about your 95 as well. Um, so uh, today is going to be, the rest of the day will be PyCon prep. I am off beginning tomorrow and I leave for PyCon early on Wednesday. I return to work on May 1st. Um, while I'm at PyCon, I'm giving a talk at the Education Summit before the conference. It's at 11 a.m. on Thursday, uh, April 20th. I'm attempting to record it, no promises, uh, but fingers crossed, um, I have all of a massive AV setup to do this, uh, but it'll be the first time I've really used this particular setup. So I'm not holding my breath, uh, but a lot of people expressed interest in seeing my talk who couldn't make it. So uh, I'm doing my best. I'll be hosting open spaces every day during the conference proper, which is the 21st through the 23rd. And then I'll be hosting uh, sprints on the first three days of the sprints, which will be the 24th through the 26th. There is a final fourth day of sprints that uh, I will not be um, hosting that day. Um, if you'll be there, come and find us. It'll be Jeff and I. Uh, Tectric, uh, Alec will be there. Um, Kate, the EE, will be there, it turns out. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we're, we'll be around. Um, for sure, you'll be able to find us at the open spaces if you check the board and figure out when they're scheduled. Um, but I'm sure that if you message me on uh, Discord uh, or something like that, um, we can eventually set up uh, a time to meet up um, outside of that. And that's what I've got. All right. Thank you, Katni. Uh, next up, I will send it over to Maker Melissa. Hello. Um, so I was out sick last week, so I missed the meeting because of that. Um, but I finished my chat GPT bear guide and showed it off on show and tell. I also helped Anne with uh, an animated GIFs project. I fixed the ST7789 display script or the um, the uh, Pi TFT script and uh, for because it was it was not compiling, so I fixed it by not compiling it when it's not necessary. And uh, currently working on a project that I'm collaborating on with Aaron St. Blaine. And after that, I may try and fix some more of the Raspberry Pi scripts. And I will be out next week because I'm moving. And that's it. All right. Thank you, Melissa. Next up is Mark Gambler, uh, who says, uh, I tried out the DVI support to some success. I'm willing to do more testing if required. Uh, and also mentions DVI support and general memory usage had me thinking about on-disk GIF palette support, uh, so on my radar when the time permits. Uh, next up is Paul Cutler. Thanks, Tim. Uh, last week I recorded two podcast episodes with Dan H. and Ben Shockley, who created the minifig board, so you can look for those uh, in May. 
as I mentioned earlier, I spent the research the, the weekend researching synths and MIDI, um, which just kind of blew my mind. And then um, trying to figure out how I might be able to run the podcast on 100% open source software, which might be a challenge I accept. Um, and this week, I finally ordered all the parts to build the Pico Step Sequencer by Toddbot and hope to build it this weekend. Thanks. Nice. Thank you, Paul. Uh, next up is Scott. Hello. Um, I've been polishing up the DVI support. Um, folks are excited. I'm excited. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm working on getting that uh, fully in. Uh, I'm having some trouble re-initting the display code, so like, it starts up automatically, but I want to be able to like de-init it and reinitialize it maybe in a different mode, say, switching from color to grayscale and back and forth and that sort of thing. Uh, generally, this stuff introduces a lot of complexity around the second core running code separately, and uh, there's a risk that uh, if it runs code from Flash while the first core that's running CircuitPython is trying to do Flash stuff, it could be really bad. Um, generally, everything needs to be put in RAM so that it generally just doesn't do Flash code. Um, turns out the RP2040 is awesome in that it has an MPU, which is a memory protection unit. Um, this allows me, and I'm going to do this today, uh, I can set it up so that after core 1 starts up, it just won't be able to access the Flash. It'll just crash instead. Um, and hopefully that'll improve uh, the reliability of um, the flash functions that um, is something that Mark ran into. And thanks again to Mark for doing an early test on this. Um, also, triage bugs with Dan. I have a couple smaller tasks to do after the DVI PR is out for review. And I also need to PR the IMX RT changes that I was working on a week or two ago as well. So uh, plenty, plenty for me to do. All right, thank you, Scott. Uh, next up and rounding out the status updates is Tectric, uh, who I'll read. Uh, last week, Tectric says, took care of some PR reviews for a few different libraries. Uh, also resumed work on the library RAM consumption CI checks. Uh, for this week, Tectric notes uh, out for Patriots Day slash Boston Marathon Monday today. Uh, heading to PyCon on Wednesday. Excited to see everyone else who's attending. And we'll try to present the aforementioned CI checks after the checks after getting, uh, I think after getting to PyCon, uh, or maybe after getting back from PyCon perhaps, uh, since I plan to help out with the sprints during the next meeting time. Uh, but I'm really excited for the current plan, which would allow for future checks to be integrated easily. Um, all right, and that was the last of our status updates. Uh, so our final section of the meeting is in the weeds section. Uh, as a reminder, in the weeds is an opportunity for long form discussions that either come out of status updates or are identified ahead of time as uh, an in the weeds topic. Um, we currently don't have any in the weeds topics down there, so I think we are good to go on that for this week, which means we can get into the wrap up instead. So uh, this has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for April 17th, 2023. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you wanna help support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on CircuitPython, please consider purchasing hardware from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting is going to be re released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be made available on major podcast services. Uh, it will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which you can visit adafruitdaily.com in order to subscribe to that. Uh, the next meeting, I believe, will be held at its normal time on Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern uh, next week, which would be the 24th of April, uh, but somebody can let me know in the chat if I am wrong on the uh, date there. Um, the meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join at uh, adafru.it slash discord. Uh, yeah, thank you for the confirmation there. Um, if you do want to participate or get uh, pings about those upcoming meetings, again, a reminder, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas rule over on Discord. So that's it for today. We hope to see you all next week, and thank you, everybody. <laughs>